In this video, I will be covering Chapter 6 of the Barron's AP Economics book. In this chapter, I will talk about what you need to know about this chapter for the AP exam, both micro and macro. Here's what you need to know. You need to know what consumer choice is, what utility is, what margin utility is, what the law of diminishing marginal utility states, the consumer surplus, income effect, and substitution effect. So what is utility? Utility essentially means satisfaction. If I am Apple, I get five units of satisfaction, utility. It's like a number used to associate how much um, pleasure or like appreciation a consumer has for a good. It seems like a little weird, but it's more of a concept, a stepping stone for more advanced concepts. In reality, most people don't serve each other about how many units of utility you get from watching a movie, for example. However, margin utility is also a very important concept. Total utility is how much utility you have in total. Marginal utility just means how much additional utility you get from consuming an additional unit. If I get six units of utility from the fifth apple I consume, the marginal utility is six for that apple. Regardless of how many apples I already ate or how much utility each other give, apple gives. The law of diminishing mar marginal utility states that the marginal utility is decreasing and that the, but the total utility is increasing at a decreasing rate. Think about pizza. The first slice is really good, so the margin utility is really high. The second slice is good, but not quite as good as the first one. So the margin utility is decreasing, but it's still positive, and because, it, and I, I still feel better after eating the second slice. But the third slice is just like eh, and eventually becomes so bad that you feel worse after a slice. That's diminished, diminishing marginal utility. So the whole premise of economic theory is based upon the idea of consumer choice. The theory rides upon several key concepts. The first is the idea that the consumer wants to maximize his or her utility per dollar spent. It's really simple common sense. The consumer also has to be able to rank goods based on preference. This is really more just to establish different margin utilities for different items. And the consumer needs to understand what the law of diminishing marginal utility is so they can make the most of their income and not to not throw away their money at one good because it provides the most utility once. The consumer also needs to be, be restricted by prices and income, and that the consumer will choose a combination of goods that provides the most utility. This isn't really like something that's going to be necessarily tested on for AP Econ, but something that you should understand so that for you can understand why consumers will choose whatever goods they buy. So this is a sample of market utility problem that the AP test might ask you. And so in this scenario, the consumer has $52. And the consumer wants to maximize his or her utility for $52. So it'll cost $4, while well, pizza costs $8. So now we have the total utility per pizza and the total utility per soda. So first we need to make sure we calculate the margin utility for all of them. And so the margin utility for, this, for the first unit of pizza is 56. Because initially at zero pizza, there's going to be zero utility. So after from consuming one pizza, you get 56 utility. The next one's 48. This one, it's see, total utility is 104, but you need to subtract 104 for 56 to find the margin utility. And you use margin utility for this problem because that's how much additional utility you get from consuming that. And then you do the same thing with soda. This is 32. This is 28. This is this is just not it. This is only this is marginal utility per unit of pizza. However, pizza costs eight dollars. So you need to find the marginal utility per dollar spent. So you divide this by eight, fifty six divide eight and you get seven. And you get six here. And you do the same thing for all of these. And you do the same thing here but for soda. So thirty two divide four is eight. And you do twenty four eight divided by four and this is seven. And you do this for all of this. And if you do all this and you correctly buy the the, the right um, item with the highest margin per dollar spent, you should end up with four pizzas, five sodas, and zero dollars left. How do you do this? Well, you first look. This is eight dollars per unit spent. This is eight units per dollar spent. This is seven units per dollar spent. So obviously, you're gonna buy soda. So now you go to the next one. Seven dollars per unit spent. Seven dollars per unit spent. So you can buy you buy one of both because they're equal, and you still have money left. And you keep doing this until you run out of money, and you should end up with four pizzas and five sodas. 
So what is consumer surplus? Consumer surplus is the difference between what a consumer is willing to pay for a good and what he or she actually pays. So if I am willing to pay $20 for an apple, and an apple at market price is only 50 cents, I only have to pay 50, 50 cents, but the consumer surplus is 1950 because that's the difference between what I was willing to pay and what it actually pays. And consumer surpluses can be modeled on a graph. So if this is supply, this is demand, and this is supply, so the market price is here, but there are plenty of people here willing to pay a higher price than the market price. And so this area under the curve, this triangular area under the curve, this is called consumer surplus. This, this area here is consumer surplus. And this is an important concept you need to know um, for, the, for the rest of this, for microeconomics, as, as, it's off, as it comes up in a, some other topics as well. So the next um, topic is called the income and substitution effects. So the substitution effect results from a price change in good A. If the price of good A increases and good B is a substitute for good B, some people will start to buy good B instead because the good B is a substitute for A. It's just common sense. If I can, if I'm, if I can either buy good A or good B, and good A is too expensive, I'll just buy good B. That's just how the substitution effect works. The income effect is basic, is similar. As the price of good A goes up, the people, the consumers can no longer buy as much of good A. So therefore, the quantity demanded of good A decreases. And so both of these are just reinforcements for the downward sloping demand curve. That's all you need to know for this chapter. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.